Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new Total War Warhammer 3 Let's Play here today on the channel. We're going to be playing as Grand Cathay, as Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. We're playing as the Northern Provinces Faction. So, if you like the sound of that, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me early access and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them. Also, please take into consideration as well that Warhammer 3 is still under development, so there will be some things subject to change here and there, as at the end of the day, this is an early access build I am playing on. In today's video, we're going to be going through the first initial turns as Miao Ying. We're going to have some battles and showing off some of the campaign mechanics and hopefully I can share with you how to get a strong start with Miao Ying once you guys get your hands on Warhammer 3. Okay, let's go through the Northern Provinces effects. Faction effects, minus 2 corruption. We get a plus 10% uh, additional leadership, 20% ammunition for missile units, a minus 50% upkeep for missile infantry and we also get a plus 3 to the Yin mechanic. Okay, difficulty for this series. We're going to be playing on very hard campaign, very hard battle. Look, this is my first Cathay Let's Play on YouTube, so maybe in the future, once I get a couple of Let's Plays of Warhammer 3 under my belt, we'll do some legendary campaigns. Well, without further ado, let's start the campaign. Okay guys, welcome to the campaign map. Let's go through the brief overview of how Cathay play. So we've got the Harmony Mechanic, which we get bonuses from Yin and Yang, or Yang, however you say it. Um, so we need to balance these bonuses, or if not, we'll do penalties. I will go in a little bit more in-depth in these mechanics in the future. So we've got the Weijin Compass as well, which gives us bonuses throughout our territory, which we get to choose from. And we've also got the Ivory Road Mechanic, which is awesome. We get to send out trade caravans to get that juicy trade <laughs> and money throughout the Warhammer world. Okay, so in our capital, we tr want to try and secure the Gunpowder Road as quickly as possible and beat that initial starting army as we can. We want to focus on growth as well to try and build up our cities and then we'll invest into better quality buildings to get better quality units. But so far, Cathay are my go-to faction in Warhammer 3. If you love the Empire, you're gonna love Cathay. Like, the Sky Junk that I've been using in the early game is essentially a mobile Hellstorm rocket battery. They have some really cool archer and crossbow units, and even the Jade Warriors in the early game have been quite good for me. I haven't tested them in sort of the late to mid to, um, game uh, later on, though. Victory conditions wise, we have to get rid of Corn, Nurgle, Slanesh, and Zinch, and we also have to destroy all these factions for the domination victory. So it's going to be a long one. Okay, so let's move Miao Ying to the first battle and get this one underway. So, let's have a look at what we're working with. Okay, so it's going to be a decisive victory, but there's only four units there. Oh, that order resolve is a little bit harsh. Although they're peasant spearmen, we're going to have to manually play this one. And we'll see how we go, but we numerically outnumber them by quite a bit. Alright, let's get stuck into the first battle. So this should be a rather straightforward battle. Okay. <laughs> we did the gamble. Unfortunately, we lost two points of Winds of Magic. So what we'll do is we'll chuck the expendable spearman at the front. Also move Miao Ying, who can transform into a dragon. We'll move our crossbows and archers into the second tier. And we'll keep our better quality units here. Okay, so I will move my peasant... Cavalry on the left. We'll try and get a flanker out. So, what I'll like to try and do is get my Sky Junk to rain fire and rockets on their R2 units. We'll aim for the unit at the back, so hopefully they can clip some at the front. We'll move my Spear Peasants forward to be a little bit more expendable. And we'll allow our archers and crossbows to be on the flanks to get their shots off here. So, slowly but surely move on up. And we'll also try and flank with our Peasant Horsemen as well. Our peasant... Horsemen aren't the best in this game, which is, well, to be expected, <laughs> as they are aptly called Peasant Horsemen. The horse is more valuable than the peasant on top of it. Alright, so let's move you back here. So we'll just try and target mostly everything at this B unit's now pushing up. And, look, this is an early access build, so this will, will be things subject to change. I think they're probably going to need to put a bit more units in this first initial army, but I guess it's always a bit of a test run. This first fight can be difficult in some campaigns, but so far we're doing alright. Mao Ying is now in dragon form, and she can target the enemy lord. 
and try and run down the remaining stranglers. So already, we've set up a pretty decent kill zone with those units. We're hitting these rebel spearmen on the left here. We'll try and redirect some of the fire from our sky junk. But already, check out how strong this thing is. Just smashing and burning past rebel peasants. And we'll try and get an angle here, preferably on the side of the rear, and charge on in these brave Cathay peasant horsemen. Alright, perfect. So all that's remaining now is the Lord, who seems to be charging my spearmen here. But that's okay. Peasant spearmen at the front can just sort of tank that. We might even get some friendly fire, I guess, if we target it. But so far, not the most difficult battle. Just trying to get Miaying into dragon form as quickly as possible. Because she is quite strong in it. Um, when she's out of it, she can cast a lot more spells. But for now, we can use her to run down units and basically tank and kite some of the heavier units. Alright, decisive victory there. Win that one there. Oh my god, we lost one unit. <laughs> some poor fella. Alright, good first victory. Crossbows did most of the kills, along with the Sky Junk, and Miao Ying in dragon form as well. But already, the Peasant Bowmen, particularly in our first sort of initial turns, they're not going to be too bad, but as the campaign gets a little bit later on, you'd think their armor quality would be a little bit to be decided. So what we want to sort of do for this campaign is try and take gunpowder road we might even try and extend into the warpstone desert maybe even slightly north as well once we've got a big enough army we'll start reinforcing the great bastion here because we've got the snake gate and a couple of other gates to the north which we will need to protect to stop the chaos forces swarming over all right so now we can see the great bastion threat um, that's been ruined. Oh, we've got the um, harmony mechanic here as well. So characters, events, buildings, and tech either go down a yin or yang path, and you do need to keep it in balance. So it's kind of cool. You can't just sort of cheese and sweat one specific tech or unit um, that you like, which is kind of cool. You need to keep it in balance so you get negative effects. So here's the Weijing Compass. Um, we're going to start off, once we get access to it, going into the Celestial Lake, which will give us a plus three growth in our regions. But if you're struggling with public order, you can go into the Dragon Emperor's Wrath, which is minus control. And we also can get more defensive supplies for our settlements. Okay, so the Ivory Road mechanic. We basically can send out these caravans. And depending how much cargo we send and units, the more money we can get from said cargo. And, well, the, we basically can protect our caravans. So you must have to pause and read all of these little pop-ups if you want. But it's rather straightforward. We're going to dispatch our cargo at about a thousand. And we'll send this caravan, which is attached to an army to some of the far-reaching Warhammer settlements. So we've got the Empire, we've got sort of the Vampire Count super far in the bottom left-hand south of the map. Um, so we might try and get another one of these as well. So we want these constantly going out. So you do have to occasionally fight battles when these get sent out. As you can see here, we've got the Vampire Counts down in the south and the Empire should be... Yeah, here's, here's Reichland as well. So you can sometimes get 4,000 in treasury, which is cool. We've also got Marienburg down there as well. So we want to be sending those out. So there is a little bit of an interesting thing that I found, that you are technically trespassing um, through their territory. Um, I haven't actually seen if you get bad uh, public order relations of it just yet, but I did notice that you are technically trespassing all through these lands that you're trading through. So I guess that allows the AI to intercept you and attack you sometimes. But here are the various trade nodes that you can set out in uh, the Cathay Ivory Road mechanic. Alright, tech-wise, let's have a look at what we're working with. So we can get... Leadership for spears, no, I don't want that. Nor do I really want the armor for the peasants. I think getting, yeah, ammunition. Focusing on our archers are the best. Um, I don't think the peasant spears are very good. They're quite expendable. They might be good in auto resolve. But from what I've already found, even the auto resolve is quite harsh on these difficulties. My siblings 
Okay, um, attitude-wise, let's dive into diplomacy. So we've got the Celestial Loyalists to the north, we've got the Imperial Wardens, uh, we've also got Wei Jing, the capital up in the north of the Dragon Emperor. We've also got a bunch of ogres to the south, which you have to keep an eye on. We do have some roaming hordes as well. Uh, we do have a Zinch wa uh, Watchers faction to the north as well. But so far, this is Cathay's starting situation. Allies and familiar faces to the north. Ogres, potentially Skaven, and basically <laughs> enemy hordes to the south and demons to the west. So we'll just go through here and just try and get as much trade and non-aggression packs as we can to secure our position. We are currently already strength ranked 3 very early on the game. Uh, we're currently at war with a fair few factions. Zinch. Um, also, just some barbarians and stuff here and there. So we'll negotiate with uh, the Iron Dragon here, uh, Zhao Ming. So he'll try and get us some money. We might even try to look to confederate with him uh, later on in the campaign. Alright, and I don't really want to negotiate with the Ogres at all just yet. And I don't think they want to trade with me, to be honest. So there's a couple of war bands here and stuff. So we're already at war with five factions, which is quite a bit early on. But hopefully we can manage. Alright, here is Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon herself. So we've got her magical items, her ancillaries. We've also got her campaign effects. So we can add this in. We also can salvage and essentially scrap these magical items that we don't need to use. Her armor is 70, leadership 94, melee attack 65, magical. And then she has a weapon strength of 4. 30 so we probably want to go try and go down a lightning strike they have actually changed this you have to put three points in to actually get what you would expect lightning strike to be in uh, warhammer 2 so they've changed that slightly all right so here are all the units as well for grand cathay so here are the lords the infantry the missile and flying more machines so we've got the Al alchemist and the astromancer as well that we can eventually get on in so I think what I'd like to do is just get some better quality crossbowmen. Um, we'll also try and get some fire rain rocket units. I do want to try and uh, test out the Sentinels. Cavalry, look, I'm not the biggest fan of cavalry, even in Warhammer 2, like the Reichsguard and stuff. So, look, we'll see how we go. Quite often, cavalry is really expensive for what it's worth. Like, missile infantry just dominates Warhammer. So, Cathay has a bunch of it, so I think what we'll do is try and focus on it, but we'll see how we go. Stuff might have been rebalanced. You don't know to try it out. So, we've got the Law of Yin here. Here are some of the Hex, Hiding, Wind, and Bombardment and Vortex spells for them. So, let's have a look at the Talons of the Night that we can look forward to. Alright. Looks like a pretty decent Vortex spell. And we have the Lord of... Lord. <laughs> we have the Law of... Uh, Yang. And this is a explosion spell. Oh my god. I can't wait to get my hands on some of these through my Astromancers. Okay, well, we've actually unlocked our first Astromancer. So let's move him on over into Miao Ying's army before we make way to claiming our first settlement. So let's have a look at him real quick. We also want to try and make headway to those um, spells that we sort of previewed as well. So what have we got here in the first initial sort of bracket? Okay, so we have Curse of the Midnight Wind, which is okay. Uh, Thunderbolt. Oh, I want to try and get that. That's a really good bombardment spell. We've also got Wind Blast and we've got Chain Lightning towards the end as well. So, essentially, Astromancers are the wizards for the Grand Cathay faction. So, it's going to take a little bit of investment to get all the way down to Chain Lightning. But, my God, it's going to be worth it when we get there. Alright, building browser-wise as well. Hmm, this is going to be a bit of a, de a decision to make. Look, I think... Focusing on growth and wealth early on is the smart play. Then we'll look to increasing our artillery capacity. Um, I wouldn't mind getting a couple of sky junk and stuff here and there. We don't even have access to recruit them if we lose our only one. Um, I wouldn't mind getting a terracotta sentinel. The thing is, I, could, I really have to choose between them or cavalry. I could ideally see myself with a lot of artillery, archers, and maybe sentinels in my like perfect army build. Alright, let's end the turn and continue. 
We'll get some more additional reinforcements in, and then we'll make our way east, I guess. Mission successful. Man, we are just smashing our way on through those missions, which is awesome. Okay, we've got a building upgrade here. Okay, so we can upgrade the gardens here, which will give us more growth on top of that. Perfect. That's what I want to see. All right. Not really much else we can do micromanagey wise. I think it's probably time to make a play east, to be honest. So, there's three provinces or settlements in total in the province of the Gunpowder Road. Let's move on over. Ooh, decisive victory. We'll lose another peasant, but we'll fight this one. Our first siege settlement of the campaign. So, can we have a quick look? Yep, so it's a. A 4D settlement. We completely can go around it. So we'll risk again and try and channel some magic. Hey, oh, we've got the bonus this time. We get a plus two. Alright, so I think the play we do with this one is keep all our archers and missiles sort of in the same area. And then what I'll do is I'll split my infantry surrounding the settlement here in a three-pronged attack. Alrighty, so we kind of want to divide the units in and around the settlement. Now they do have access to construction in their settlement, so they're going to be able to build um, battlements, traps, barriers that we've seen in... Uh, you see a lot, a lot of it in Total War Attila, of course, uh, but this time around they can actually build arrow towers within here is a bit of a close-up of some of the Grand Cathay units. Now let's start the battle. So we want to try and be a bit patient, take our time, no rush. We'll try and allow our peasant bowmen, our crossbows, and sky junk just to try and whittle down as many of the enemy units inside, and then we'll make our way in. So already they've been a little bit astute here, the AI, where the majority of my army is going to attack from. They've made the decision to construct an arrow tower here, which we definitely want to try and bring on down. We can actually shoot them with my archers, but we'll just try and focus on some of their units, mostly. But we can redirect all our firepower if we want at that tower. We'll allow our sky junk to try and do most of the damage. But already, we are just smashing this unit here that's on the tower, and we've already managed to take just under. 2,000 of the health, so we'll get Miao Ying to go into dragon form as well, and we'll send her on in to terrorize the inhabitants of the settlement. But look at this settlement, man. It looks glorious. I love the Cathay Chinese-styled architect architecture that's inspired on this. It looks awesome. Alright, so we managed to smash our way on through that arrow tower quite quickly. And we'll send in Miao Ying to make sure they don't come back. Alright. We want to try and now move up my spearmen and jade warriors in advance. And we'll try and hold here. As they have spread out quite a bit throughout the settlement. And we're probably not going to be able to hit anyone just yet. So we'll just allow Miao Ying to try and take down as many of those as she can. She might even run into a spear unit here if we're not careful. So we're currently 85, 90% favored to win this battle. So it'll be interesting to see how many we lose. At the end of the day, it is a defensive siege, so we will be taking more casualties. Rather than an offensive lamb battle sometimes. Well, we only lost one before. <laughs> so they are protecting these construction zones, which are split throughout the settlement here. There's four of them, and then there's the main town square. So if you do want to try and stop them from constructing, um, from what we found already, we smashed our way through that tower. So I think focusing on units rather than the construction, um, essentially, zones for now is probably the play. I think that's more important. We haven't had too much of an issue with them, like, spamming construction stuff just yet. So we'll focus on the units, and then we'll make our way through taking those supply zones. Okay, so there's another unit gone. Alright. So this is actually a better quality unit now. We've got some Jade Warriors here. Let's see how Miao Ying does in Dragon Form combat with them. 
and once we start targeting our missile units as well. So, so far, the AI is bringing one unit at a time for me, which is perfect, as we've got our peasant bowmen, our crossbows, and our sky junk raining fire and death upon them. So, I said that if you love the Empire, you're going to love Cathay. Maybe if you even like the High Elves to some extent. The Cathay has a really strong archer and crossbow roster. Like, I like to tend to play as the human factions first. In sort of any game, to be honest. Before we move to sort of chaos and stuff. Alright, so they are constructing quite quickly another tower here. So, it'd be interesting to see second time around how quickly we can destroy it. Because there are tiers of arrow towers you can construct as well. Uh, it goes up to tier 4 that I imagine. Because you can have... Uh, you can basically go from, I think it's archers, crossbows, cannons. And like artillery that they can have in there. So as we haven't taken any, it's going to be interesting to see if they're bringing in a stronger arrow tower to try and hit us. But we are in quite close range. So we should be okay. Alright, I've made the decision to move in some jade warriors here and some peasants. Just against these jade warrior crossbows. We might even send in Miao Ying to smash them from behind. But already, those crossbows have smashed on through that peasant unit, which has taken most of the brunt. So, maybe I should have been a little bit more patient on this left-hand side. But for now, we've got peasants and jade warriors holding as Miao Ying comes in with additional reinforcement. <laughs> wow, smashing away on in. Alright, so that arrow tower is nearly being constructed. And let's quickly try and target again and bring the tower down. Alright, let's move my infantry up as well. We've got some Celestial Dragon Guard. Also got some more Jade Warriors as well. But so far, I actually don't mind the Jade Warriors. It'll be a, a completely different story to see how they face against some of the Chaos factions in the late to mid game. But so far, they've been decent. Even in like the battle replays that I've seen for Warhammer 3. Alright, so already we've absolutely just smashed on through that arrow tower. It was probably not even worth them building that. Just wasting the supplies. They might have been better off to put traps or maybe hold in choke points and barricades. But the health of those things, we, we didn't even use that much of our ammunition. And another one's gone, but to be fair, I don't know what that building was. Was it a tier 1 arrow tower? Which would make sense if it was. Alright, so they are slowly bringing units one by one at me, which is perfect. And we'll just redirect some of our sky junk. We can actually move up and over the top of units and drop a bombardment, but look, it takes a little while to maneuver these things. They can, they're not exactly 100% invulnerable sky junk. Like, if you come up against an army that has a bunch of missiles, they can get really smashed and taken on out. But so far, we haven't come across this early on any heavy missile armies. Like, if we get up against a pretty decent Zinch army build, we're going to struggle. Because we already saw in my Warhammer 3 battle replays how strong Zinch is as a missile-focused faction. The amount of archers and missile magical ability they have is off the charts. <laughs> so good. I think... If, um, when I get able to, Zinch might be my preferred Chaos faction to play. Let me know who you're going to play first in your Warhammer 3 campaign. Because hopefully, if things go to plan over the coming weeks and, and months and years, we'll be playing Warhammer 3 on the channel for quite a bit. There's a bunch of content I can't wait to sink my teeth on into. Alright, so now it's swung back to about 95%. They've got the enemy lord to the far west, which is fine. Man, this is such a large settlement to navigate through. Crikey. We're going to have to slowly but surely now make our way through the city streets. And they are actually building barricades to try and stop us. Because those things were always actually... It was actually quite astute from the AI in, in, in Attila to build those barricades because they were quite hard to break down even like in medieval kingdoms 1212 AD that mod like you definitely need to bring axemen to just smash your way on through like if they can snipe you right with missiles you can get caught on off angles and in the rear with some units all right so we're starting to take some of their supply points now so that's just stop them building 
nonsense to stop us <laughs> in these choke points. Alright, so they're now routing, which is perfect. Alright, we don't want anyone to really sit idly by. So, try and make your way into the town square where you can. We also want to try and get some of these supply points as well. So, not much is going on here. We can chuck things up on three times speed. Because I will be... Well, I am technically running on time restrictions for some of these videos. So, I'll try and distribute my time where I can. Okay. So that Lord's come back. Right, we've pinned down this halberd unit here. We'll send in our peasant horsemen to see how they go. And that's a decent charge there. That's what I like to see. That's when you know when the charge has been really high octane, really impactful. Seeing soldiers flying over each other. Although it looks cool. I don't actually think we did that much of a dent. Oh, maybe a little bit. We chipped a decent chunk off. Come on, peasants. Let's go for a second time around. To be fair, these Jade Warrior Halberds are quite heavily armored and they're in a decent position. Well, we are sending a fair few of them flying. So we'll just try and pin them here with the Jade Warriors and cycle charge where we can. Alright. Come on, Meow Ying. Go back into dragon form. So as you can see, she does have a regen ability here as well. Um, we haven't specced her out just yet to unlock some of her decent spells. But so far, getting a dragon very early on in the campaign is quite useful. There we go. We're starting to hit that halberd unit from a flank as well. Pinning it down with the front. Smashing it from the side. And then cycle charging with peasant cavalry in the back. It's not going to be able to hold much longer, you would imagine. Even as a halberd unit. Oh, that's it. GG. We've won our first siege and settlement battle in Warhammer 3. I'm curious to see the casualties sustained and what was being inflicted in this one. All right. Good first siege. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> Decisive victory. Right, so we lost 175. Not too shabby. We outnumbered them by 200. And, yeah, the Peasant Archer's got most of the kills. Jade Warrior's okay. Meow Ying with another 50. Wow, the Sky Junk got a whopping 200 kills. So, you definitely want to try and keep that thing alive as long as possible in the early game. Because it is incredibly... Invaluable. Maybe even better quality than the Celestial Dragon Guard, if I'm being honest. So far, I guess we haven't been chucking them in. We've been keeping them in reserve. We've been quite passive with them. But even in that, they only got 30 kills. Alright, so uh, we can get essentially better quality Jade Warriors in the future. Um, we've also got some iron hand gunners as well. Let's get a couple of those in because those essentially hand gunners for the Empire. I don't like too many of them, but you can really use them to your advantage if you have like one or two of them. Alrighty, so Miao Ying's gone up in stats. She's got a plus two skill point. We could go into Root Marcher. I do want to try and get Lightning Strike. Um, they have changed it. They have to put in like three points to actually get it properly. So it will be quite an investment. Uh, essentially, a Lightning Strike, if you don't know, is essentially Night Attack from like the older Total Wars. So you can take essentially three armies out one by one rather than attacking them all at the same time which is really useful my astromancer has gone up in stats as well so I think I might actually go with Thunderbolt but Wind Blast is arguably better but you do have to micro it a bit more which can be costly you can just sort of chuck Thunderbolt out <laughs> whenever you want Okay, that's enough of skill point distribution. Let's end the turn and continue. Man, we're powering on through the end turns. Oh, look at this. We've got a caravan encounter. I wanted to show you guys this. So, um, what does this one say? So, uh, essentially we can pay for a safer and quicker route. Or we potentially might have to pay 
uh, play a battle. Uh, we have a bunch of money in the bank. We're making a healthy amount per turn. We've also got a decent just chilling in the war treasury. So we'll pay for it. But yeah, quite often as your caravans trespass and go on their merry way to their desired target, they can get attacked and intercepted. We've got some dwarfs here that we've ran on into. So you do tend to play battles quite often down there. But yeah, we technically are trespassing, which is interesting. Alright. Cool beans. We're looking good. I think it's time to march south. We'll move to the bridge here. And we're going to be able to technically be within our zone, so we can get some more recruitment as well. Alright, there's nine in there. What have they also got in the garrison? Okay, that's actually quite a bit. Because we want to try and secure Gunpowder Road as quick as possible. And get that edict in. We'll get two more Jade Warriors as well. To help us. Ooh. Oh, okay. That is really fortunate. They have... <laughs> they have um, recruited a lord outside the settlement. So we're going to be able to drag everyone out. Alright, let's attack that. Let's see what we're working with. Oh, oh my god. Okay. I think I might have bitten off a lot more than what I can chew here. Crushing defeat. We might have to withdraw. How many units will we lose? They've got three lords, which is the main thing. Oh my god. It's predicting we'd lose all our army. Nah, we'll play this one. you got to risk it for the biscuit. So it's the first army coming on in. Okay. I don't think we gamble. So, we've got some pretty decent high ground here by the look of it. Oh, this is actually the same battle map that I did in my replay, like my first Cathay one. Oh, this is really, this is a really strong map. Because you've got some decent high ground elevation. And you've also got a narrow choke point here in the center. Okay, so I think, it's just a little bit hard to do this on the fly. I think what we'll do is we'll make a strong center with our better quality infantry and then we'll put all of our crossbows and peasant bows like maybe angle them slightly because they can get an off angle here like putting them straight behind the infantry like they have to arc their shots up and over the infantry is not the play i think getting on the angles is probably a bit better to be fair with our uh hand cannons they actually might be able to get a shot off it or they might be better off here we're going to have to keep some units in reserve as well because we will get flanked because they have numerical supremacy on me. And we're going to have to protect our Sky Junk and Meow Ying and our Astromancer as well. So I think we'll do something like this. Oh my god, this is, good. This is going to be a good one. This is one of those battles that can make and break campaigns. <laughs> this is why I love Total War. Like, there's always a couple, regardless of who you are and where you play. If you don't win the battle, it can really stuff you up and, and send you back to the start of the campaign. Like, it's nearly a redo if you lose, like, an entire army in the first province. So, we're going to have to see how we go with this one. <laughs> right, let's start the battle. Let's move on up. And we're already getting some shots off here with our Sky Junk. We don't want to be doing that. We don't want to be wasting valuable Sky Junk ammunition on one measly unit. But I will move it up. Because we want to be able to essentially control the river crossing as well. If we can smash any unit that comes in there, uh, we have to move further up. I don't know if you're actually better off to be there. Like, when we were sitting further back, it was better, but now I'm unsure. All right. So let's move you here. We need to make sure these flanks are protected properly. Uh, Miao Ying is now in dragon form. So if she can target that unit. I don't want to move up my missiles too far like to chase it. Alright, we're going to keep our cavalry there at one point. I need to set up these. Yeah, I just don't know if that's the play there. Maybe they're better to be like here. Maybe that's a more better quality angle. Right, so Miao Ying's fighting here. Yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to make sure my um, infantry is in the right position. I did think it make it eh, maybe did a little bit of damage, but it probably wasn't worth the couple of volleys it went off. I could hear it popping off. The oh, what's this? 
Ah, oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. That's a mechanic. That's a new feature. Alright, so we had an option there to end the battle because we destroyed the... Well, we've made the unit, the enemy general route, technically. We, that's got some mad range, I think. They might need to reduce that. That's a crazy shot from those peasant bowmen. Anyway, we've gotten rid of him, which is really good. Because what can really complicate things in Warhammer is not necessarily the units. Sometimes, once they have a lot of lords, that can really start to hurt things. But they're slowly but surely moving on up. We are heavily outnumbered in this one. We've got a decent defensive position. Hopefully we can hold on and lock it down for the Dragon Emperor, Grand Cathay, and Miao Yang the Storm Dragon. Okay, so we've got some peasant horsemen here hightailing it on the left-hand side. We'll send Miao Ying to try and intercept. And there even seems to be some pushing into the center. We've managed to catch them, which is really interesting. Oh no, I've misclicked. Ah! <laughs> oh no! Never conquered. With infinite pride. All right, I need to reform this. Make it look a bit nicer. <laughs> Accidentally moved it on up. But yeah, Miao Ying actually ran down a horse unit. I'm surprised her in dragon form was quick enough to actually get there. Alright, here we go. We've got some peasant horsemen here. Bravely charging into the breach. And they're going to strike the Jade Warrior's head on. We've got Archer Fire hitting them from the sides along with cannons as well. And they have been absolutely decimated. As the hand cannons come in and vaporize the last of the peasant horsemen there as well. My god. So, if that's the sign of things to come... We might do all right in this battle. Man, isn't this swung into about a 50-50? It's going to be a good one. Especially when we've got that first Lord done and dusted. All right. I think I accidentally had it on uh, melee mode, technically. The Sky Junk. All right, we'll keep it there on top of the river. We're going to have to be keep mindful of its health because it can get basically shot and, and brought on down. We've got some warp stone there. In uh, the mountain range. Alright, the, yeah, these hand cannon. Yeah, so that's good enough. I was just like, you gotta be careful sometimes with the elevation of cannons, hand cannons. You wanna make sure it's like perfect, or otherwise they can't get the shots off. Alright, so, looks like Miao Ying is actually tanking. Not tanking, I guess, sort of. Yeah, I guess. Kiting like four units over. And more tanking, yeah, tanking. They're not moving them about that much, so it's not kiting. But yeah, tanking those four units on the left. Man, look at this! This epic Cathay defensive position, we are absolutely smashing. We're slaughtering everything that's coming up that hill. Alright, I'm going to watch out for the Sky Junk. It has taken 50% uh, damage. I want to try and keep it there because we're, it's very slow to move. And we're going to be able to drop bombardments on them if we can. Like, I want to try and hit that cluster. Okay, so they haven't yet, but you can already see them moving. They're starting to pivot on the left and maybe on the right. Oh, we've lost 50% here. We're going to have to be quick. So, we'll drop the sky, jump, sky Junk bomb here. Perfect. Oh, but the cooldown's like a minute. Okay. I'm going to try and get... Miao Ying to try and target some of the generals. So, we haven't managed to soften up enough some of the halberds hitting the right center and the left there. Okay, so... We haven't lost much, but we've taken a fair amount of them out. This is going to be really quite close. I don't know if we've done enough on the sort of initial encroachment. My Astromancer isn't really high enough level. But if we do win this, it's going to be a heroic or a pyrrhic victory, potentially. My Sky Junk's at 50%. Do we keep it in there? It would be worth to get those bombardments. Okay, so that spear unit has come around. We'll get my infantry unit that I've put on the flank there to engage. And then we'll try and uh, cycle charge with the cavalry. We're whittling down anything that came up against the front line. Alright, charge on in now. Hit this peasant spearman. 
I don't know the difficulty rating of Cathay. But you do have to be careful in these initial provinces. It's not the most easiest and straightforward campaign. Because like this, if you don't win this, you could really <laughs> stuff up your campaign. But so far, we're holding on. We're not doing too bad. Or maybe I'm being a little bit too optimistic. That's now crushed. There's a lot in that center there. They actually outnumbered us by a thousand, which is quite a bit. Uh, Mia Ying's doing all right. Oh, she has lost a lot of health, though. We might have to fall her back. Oh, okay. She's really quite low. 20% here. Yeah, so it only takes a couple of volleys to put Miao Ying and the Sky Yunk in a really bad situation. Okay, we've got some more units flanking. Oh, there's a Wind Blast there. I wasn't expecting that. But so far, our hand gunners are absolutely rip-roaring through the Peasant Center. The Sky Junk might actually fall here if we're not careful. I want to try and get this last bomb off again, but you got to go. you got to hightail it out of here, man. you got to go, go, go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Go. Run. Book it. Because <laughs> if we lose the Sky Junk, that's it. We don't have one for the... Really, the rest of the campaign. Oh, but thankfully, they're not targeting it anymore. Oh, my God. That's um, saving Private Ryan stuff there. <laughs> saving the Sky Junk privates. Oh my god. How have they finessed out of that one? That is the smallest slither of hell. And Miao Ying's not looking too healthy as well. Alright, sw swung back to about a 65% now. Thankfully, I put those units on the flanks. So they are uh, holding on. I think we've just got to take the initiative now. Like... My infantry units have actually held on quite a bit. So I think we have to bravely advance and go on up. We'll swing my cavalry around here as well. Some of these we're still targeting. But show f so far, I think this battle is a really good sort of example of how strong Cathay is as an artillery and missile faction. This is a really, really good battle. Ah, oh, perfect victory. That was a fun one, wasn't it? Defensive position, crossing a river, high grounds. Oh, perfect. As you like to see, decimation of the enemy. <laughs> and we'll just try and run down as many of them as we can because we want to try and make the settlement siege as easy as possible. We might have to play it because the order resolve is quite harsh, which we've already seen throughout this campaign, but we'll just have to see how we go. But these hand gunners, man, look at that. You only need one or two of them. And they are so, so strong. So let's speed things up. All right, we tried to run down as many of them as we can. So we are short on time. I've only got a limited number of time to record stuff. Um, but you don't need to send me running down units. But yeah, look at that. 266. Oh, my God. 200 kills with the Sky Junk. Even 200 with the Peasants. A little bit deceiving because we ran them down. Celestial Dragon Guard. I was talking smack about you earlier on in the video. You've done really well there. <laughs> You've actually stepped it up. One of my hand gunners as well got uh, 170. And I guess the Jade Warriors got about 50 each when they pushed down to their defensive position and advanced forward. But so far, decisive victory. Ah, uh, okay. That's annoying. So I could auto resolve this one. But I'm going to lose the Sky Junk. <laughs> so after all that, we're going to have to uh, manually play it. Okay. Uh, we've also unlocked the Weijing Compass as well, which we will do after this battle. We've got to keep an eye on the north, though, because there seems to be an army pushing towards us. So that's annoying. We would play... Um, sorry, we would auto-resolve this one just to save on time, but we're going to have to play it to protect this Sky Junk. There's absolutely nothing... In this army. Look at that. Mostly peasants, bowmen. We should be able to make quick work of them inside. So let's start the deployment. We'll do essentially a similar tactic to what we did earlier on. In today's video. 
So this should be, what, the fourth battle today? Yeah. Two sieges, two land battles. Pretty decent output for episode one. And we should be able to end it off with the... Capture and securing of the Gunpowder Road. Alright, so I think our major attack comes from here. We're probably not going to rely on Miao Ying or the Sky Junk really for this one, so it might complicate things. We might actually lose a little bit more casualties, but we should be alright. There's only peasants inside. The bowman is the concern, not necessarily the spearman. Alright, let's move on in and try and get those supply points. So there's four in this one, and then the town square, yeah, 95%. I think that's just unlucky with the order resolve more than anything. Okay, they've actually got a tower there, which is quite far back. Oh, wow, the sky junk's actually in range. Awesome, we'll keep it far back. Right, we'll chuck things on three, uh, well, we'll chuck things on three times speed where we can. I'll be able to move you up here. Okay, that's been captured. Move you here. Yeah, so, so far, essentially a three or four pronged attack into the settlement seems to be working quite a bit. Because sometimes if you cluster your units in one spot, they tend to just like put them... Ad well, from what I've experienced in other Total Wars, I haven't played Warhammer 3 enough to know if that's the standard for everything. But so far, they seem to be spreading their units throughout the settlement, which is good. But if you've got like a, I don't know, archer or artillery doomstack army, you probably want them to cluster up, I guess. So, surrounding and going for a three to four pronged attack, eh, might not be the best for everyone, depending on your army build. We might want to try and make a play for the town square soon. I think we will. Alright, so we've got some jade warriors here. Charging on in. Now that this is not the most micro or... Sort of hardest battles. We might even zoom in and try and get some cinematic shots. Because I do try to take, to try and get as many of them as we can. Because you want to see the units. You want to see them fighting and smashing through other units, <laughs> annexing territory in all their glory. I guess. Okay, so we've got three under our control. There's only one more left, so they're not going to be able to construct anything inside. Let's charge on in here. So, we'll press insert on the keyboard and see if this looks alright. As they charge on in. For Miao Yang. For the Storm Dragon. Alright, we should be able to make quick work of those archers here with two infantry units. Another decent, good looking settlement, eh? Looks a little bit different. We haven't actually had this one, eh? This one's different from the other siege that we fought. So the variety's there, which is cool. Alright, pushing on in. Uh, what's going on? No, yeah, we had to pull back there. Nothing's really going on too crazy there. Okay, they're moving their general up. He's not an actual lord or hero unit, so... Just a peasant unit. He's not going to be too hard to contend with. And we'll try and capture the town square as quickly as possible. I'm about to catch some units fleeing here with our archers. Oh my god, we're just smashing our way on in. Okay, everyone's sitting back in reserve, which is fine. And we've nearly capped it. We're half our way on in. Let's reform you up. Okay. You're holding just here. We've nearly got it under our control, the town square. Just need to fend off these two units that have come to answer. Okay, what's going on down here? Yeah, you're getting pulled away. You need to come back in. Hey, victory. Perfect. Win that one there. We don't need to run anyone down. We just need to get that one over and done with. 86, which is quite a bit. A little bit annoying. Oh, yeah, the Celestial Dragon Guard. Yeah, maybe I was a little bit harsh on them as a unit. They're just quite expensive. The defensive parameter for what they are. So I'm unsure about them. But that's the beauty of Total War when you first start playing. You just got to find out the units that you like and don't. 
and see which ones are worth the money and sort of are best suited to your playstyle because everyone plays total differently. All right, so what are we looking at here? I'm um, just looking at the edicts that Cathay have. Uh, money's good. We got enough. An ar we've got enough of an army to deal with any public order stuff, so it's probably not worth doing control. I think getting money from trade. We do have a couple of trade lanes going out uh, between some of the Cathay factions, don't we? We're not trading with the ogres because I don't want to anger other Cathay factions because we do want to try and look to confederate, um, especially with the Iron Dragon. Uh, Xiao Ming and maybe even some of the Celestial Loyalists into the stuff. We've got to watch out for that roaming army coming south. And the Western Great Bastion as well is currently ruined. So now that we've secured Gunpowder Road, I don't think we'll push into the Warpstone Desert just yet. We might even make a play north because we want to try and... Con we want to make sure that we're controlling the Great Bastion or a Cathay faction is. Um, also, you've gone up in stats now as well. Um... I guess we go with Life Bloom. Because we want to be able to try and heal her in battles. Because I do tend to want to sort of chuck her on in. We've also got two more skill points that we can divvy That's up as well. Alright. I've just had a bit of a read of everything I want to do. Maybe getting some sort of buffs to our archers, I think it's probably not a bad idea. Okay, Astromancer. Um, we'll chuck everything in just to one. Thunderbolt and Wind Blast. And we'll focus on that. Alright, so we've got the Weijing Compass now. Uh, we can get growth with the Celestial Lake. I think that's what we want to do. Because we want to try and build up our settlements where we can be like we don't need the ca uh, casualty rate it's not even that much anyway like plus two we don't need the control either because we can deal with rebellions even more money as well i think it's worth doing that one early on Alrighty. well i think it's time to wrap things up here thank you very much for watching episode one of my total War warhammer three meow ying the Storm Dragon, the Northern Provinces Cafe campaign. We're going to march north. We'll make plans to. It might actually be worth uh, recruiting another army here because they are quite close, that invading army. Um, oh, okay. So what have we gone for? Yin and Yang. So you can actually choose it within it in here. The Law of Yang, uh, Yang and the law of yin. I think... Well, it doesn't really matter because we're so early. We can actually choose whoever's got the best traits. I guess we go with you. We'll move you in here. We've, we've, finances wise, we're good. We've got enough. So... We can eventually start recruiting from there. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Stay tuned for episode 2 coming out soon and more Warhammer 3 content on the channel. I've got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me early access and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them. Alright, so without further ado, I've got to play the outro now and say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>